In this video, we're going to go over the Bolin Variations, which expands on my previous video, 7 Basic Knots. The first variation is the Yosemite Bolin, also known as the Yosemite Finish. The benefit of the Yosemite Bolin is that it's less likely to slip. So if you're going to use the Bolin for climbing or rescue operations, it's a good idea to do the Yosemite Finish. We'll start by doing a regular Bolin. If you don't know how to do a bowling already, go ahead and check out my first video, which is how to do seven basic knots, including the bowling. Be sure to leave yourself plenty of slack in the working end. This way you can actually finish the knot. Take the working end, go behind the loop, cross over to the front on the outside, and enlarge the loop that is on the standing end. You'll take the working end behind the loop and fish your way up through the loop so it's parallel with the standing end. After you tighten it down, you now have a Yosemite Bolin. Everything should be clean and lay flat. The next variation is the water Bolin. This is particularly useful when your line is gonna get wet, you might be bringing your line through some grime and making it a little bit more slick and snotty than it would be if it was dry and nice and clean. To do the water bowling, we'll start with the regular line at an end. We'll make two overhand loops, similar to what you would do for a regular bowling. We'll take the working end and fish it through the bottom of the loop closest to the working end. And then we'll do the same for the loop closer to the standing end as well. Now just like the regular bowlin, it'll go around the standing end, like a rabbit going around a tree, and then it'll go through the top and bottom loops. Once you tighten these things down, you now have a water bowlin. And just like with a standard bowlin, there's also a quick way to do this as well. Start with a line at an end, swoop around your standing end with your working end twice. At this point, you're already looped through, go around the standing end, and then you can bring the line all the way through and tighten everything down. And there you have a water bowlin. While it takes a little bit longer to tie, if you're gonna be using a line where it's gonna get wet, dirty, potentially slimy and underwater, this is the perfect knot. The third variation of the bowlin is the round turn bowlin, also known as a double bowlin. This is more secure than a regular bowlin, but looks cleaner and lays better than a water bowlin. We'll start at an end, and we'll do one overhand loop, and another overhand loop right next to it, going the same direction. That way you'll end up with sort of a coil and you'll have two coils that are in this configuration. We'll take the working end, fish it through the bottom of the coil, and go around the standing end just like a regular bowling. Everything's pulled through, and the knot is tightened. And there you have it. That is a round turn, or also known as a double bowling. This next variation is extremely important. It's a bowling in a bite. So if you have a long line or a long rope and you need to tie a bowling, and you don't want it to be at either end because it's too long, you can do it in a bite. First, we'll need to start with the line on a bite, and you'll need quite a bit of length of this. Go ahead and make an overhand loop, just like with a standard bowling only now you have two lines instead of one. Without getting it all twisted up, take the bite and fish it through the loop. The bite is then brought around the standing end. And here's a very important part. Instead of passing it back through the loop, we will enlarge the bite and pass the whole apparatus through the bite loop. It is then tightened down and now you have a bowlin on a bite. The interesting thing about this as well is that you have two lines that create loops. 
This can be used as sort of a makeshift seat, but also if you need to, you can use it to anchor two points. The next variation is a twin bowlin bend. This is very similar to a sheet bend, but instead of doing a single sheet bend, you're actually putting basically two of them back to back. We'll start with the first line, and we'll go ahead and do an overhand loop for this. The second line is brought through the hole, around the standing end of the first line, and back into the loop. Another overhand loop is done to the second line. The working end of the first line is brought to the bottom of the loop, around the standing end, and then back down through the loop. Everything is tightened down to an even pressure. When you're done, everything should look symmetrical and all the lengths should be even. And of course, you can do the water bowling configuration for this as well as the round turn bowling. 